What screams pretending to be upper class? Story 1. Talking down to working class people. Don't get me wrong, there are definitely snooty, jerkwad upper class people. However, in my interactions with them as a working class person in services, they've always been extremely nice. My guess is, because we both know who we are in society, there are no pretensions. Fake upper class people have to completely reinforce the class divide. It had to be absolutely clear that they are and always have been above you. Part of me thinks it's resentment at what they might have used to have been, and the other part thinks it's how they think other upper class people behave. One thing I also noticed, working in construction around wealthier people, the rich man is the nicest person you'll ever meet. He'll offer you a nice break time and talk like one of the guys. The rich man's spouse is a shrew. Don't even look at them. The rich woman is the friendliest person ever. She will thank you for everything and talk about how she would never be able to do that. The rich woman's spouse is annoying, obnoxious, and snobby. There are, of course, exceptions, but this is what I experienced in my time. This is absolutely true. I used to be a bartender in a very high-end hotel. Our clientele was composed almost entirely of upper echelon business workers, mid-high-end weddings, and high-end banquets. People with serious money don't give a care. If they have a problem, they aren't scared to tell you about it and are happy as long as it gets rectified promptly. Otherwise, they treat you like a human freaking being and tip well, generally. People People who think they have money are massive meanies. These people act like hot stuff, treat service workers like hot stuff, and you can see right through it. And you learn to tell immediately because of little things, like accessories and attitude. People with money never show off the things that prove it, like wallets, watches, jewelry, and purses. If they don't have money, they have one glaringly expensive accessory, and they flaunt that stuff. Immediate red flag. People with money don't need to act or be told that they're important. People who think they have money, try hard to make sure you notice they think they're awesome, and also skimp on the gratuity. Very interesting observations here. I've known some people who just don't flaunt their wealth at all. They're so wealthy, they don't even show that they're wealthy at all. There are some people who practice something called stealth wealth. They actually live a normal life with a normal house. You couldn't tell they're wealthy. They don't have to flaunt anything, and they can actually save money by living in an average average house in an average neighborhood. Story 2. Simply talking about money and how much things cost is a way to brag and show others your wealth. I grew up fairly close to my cousin. He's six months older than me and his family, and they are what I consider to be truly wealthy. My uncle is slash was a very well-respected dentist who built his practice up from nothing over a 30-year period. He retired in the last five years. My uncle grew up in a dirt-poor farming family and never flaunted his wealth when he became wealthy. He didn't buy a new sports car every year. He still still drives the same sports car he bought 15 years ago. He didn't wear flashy designer clothes. He still wears expensive clothes, though. And you never know he was a millionaire if you passed him in the street. He owns properties all over the province, for hunting and net worth reasons. Owns a mansion in the Bahamas on the beach. And takes trips to Europe yearly. You wouldn't know any of these things unless you knew him on a personal level. On the other side of my family, I have an uncle that would be considered upper middle class. He always had to have the fanciest toys, the newest models, etc., and everything was slash is a competition to him. My parents bought a new Cadillac before they retired, and of course he had to purchase one as well, except it had to be better. So he bought a CTSV within a month of my parents so he could be better than my parents. He also had to brag about his traveling, telling us of the fun he had in Vegas last week, the exciting trip to Mexico he's taking next, and so on. In my experience, there's two types of wealth. There is the truly wealthy class who are humble people that make smart decisions with their money and don't treat it like a competition, and there is the faux wealthy class, who have to try and flaunt their wealth in the face of others as a way of keeping score and ensuring that they're perceived as winning. There's a TikTok account that does this exact thing. The wealthy versus the very wealthy. The merely wealthy guy is always in competition, trying to brag, and is always anxious. The really wealthy person actually treats people of any stature with respect. Don't remember the exact name of the channel, but if you look it up, it's really funny. Story 3. 
my ex comes from a really, well, kind of messed up family. Her dad is a multimillionaire who cheated on her mom and wound up leaving and was, by all accounts, not a great husband, father, or man. But after he left, my ex's mom became a professional alimony hound. She never got a high school diploma and worked part-time as a hairdresser, but was a single mom in a house that must have been a million plus. It was clear, based on the way she spoke, that she was living paycheck to paycheck on gross child support and alimony checks, funding a lifestyle that would disappear completely if something happened to her ex-husband. Her home is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Multiple formal dining rooms, mismatched hardwood furniture everywhere, for some reason every TV is hidden in a closed closet, etc. But the weirdest thing, the weirdest freaking thing, is that there are no clocks in the house. 25 mirrors. There's not a spot in the home where you can't find your reflection, but you never know what time it is. I'm not sure if that's a direct answer to the question. I think there's a big difference between those that have earned their money and those that had it handed to them. It's like just about anything you work to achieve. When you work, you appreciate it so much more. When you have it handed to you, you don't really appreciate its value and you easily take it for granted. This woman seems to fall right there. Story 4. One of my husband's best friends comes from a filthy rich family, think billions. We went to his wedding a few years ago, and the social experiment that ensued was beyond fascinating. The guests themselves were a mix of anyone from broke college kids, us, to doctors, to millionaires and billionaires. Some trends definitely emerged amongst the people who were obviously self-conscious about their wealth, though. They were frequently dismissive and sometimes downright rude to the serving staff. They made sure logos of their belongings were plain mainly in sight. Your hotel room is literally connected to the reception venue, so I know you didn't need to bring your $1,200 Canada Goose Parker to dinner. They also made sure to talk loudly about their expensive plans for the future and highlighting any wealth, related attributes in the process. Oh, well, my girlfriend is graduating medical school next year, so we're starting to look at houses, mostly in the 800k one mil range. It was a stark contrast against the people who were comfortable with their social status, wealthy or otherwise, who were all just happy to be there, having fun, drinking alcohol, and wholly unworried about which stranger they'll never meet again knows how much money they wish they had. Story 5 I used to be concerned about how I looked slash dressed when going to a high-end retailer. Now I simply don't care. If they won't serve me when wearing jeans, then I'll just go somewhere else. This actually happened to me. I needed new glasses and I walked into a bunch of different stores and couldn't find the right frame. I ended up walking into a very high-end store because of the frames I saw in the window and asked to try them on. I was wearing sweats and a t-shirt because it was my day off of work. I have to wear professional clothing to work. The lady looked at me for a moment before saying, it's very expensive, and not making one move to help me. So I ended up saying to her, I didn't ask how much they cost. I said I wanted to try them on. The shock on her face was priceless. After trying them on and being happy with how they looked, I proceeded to pay for them. I return about once a year, and I get the best service from her now. One of my dumbest goals in life is to be well off so I can go into fancy places dressed in sweats and just be labeled eccentric instead of that unhinged woman. I am unhinged, but they don't need to know that. Story 6. My uncle and his wife are perfect examples. They bought a brand new Mercedes that they can't afford, live in a house that's too big for them, bought a caravan in a park where the ground rental is nearly 50 k a year, they bought their kids expensive bikes that were never used, and what did they use to pay for all this? If you guessed credit cards, then you're correct. Credit cards and loans from my grandmother, which they will never pay back. Then, they make fun of my mother and for being working class. Might as well spit on my grandmother grandfather's grave since he was working class through and through. Yeah, financing a lifestyle is insane. Going into debt for luxury items is the craziest thing people do. This goes to show that truly wealthy people have a different view of money. This couple is chasing money to gain a lifestyle. The really wealthy know how to make money work for them. They probably know how to make debt work for them. But this... This isn't making money work for them. This isn't making debt work for them. This is acquiring debt that they aren't going to be able to pay back. Story 7 
I work at an exotic car rental branch. I have plenty of customers that rent our cars and ask us to take the ID tags off the key ring. Understandable. Then have some that insist that they get the same license plate each time and will flip out if we give them the same model as usual but with the plate one digit off. They're trying to make the appearance to whoever that they own the car and get themselves in a trap where they have to keep renting to keep up the illusion. That charade never lasts long. This is cringe. Story 8. Getting married in a big fat wedding by taking out loans, borrowing from friends, plus getting super expensive rings when you can't afford one-tenth of it. This may not be as bad as some of the other answers, but a friend of mine took out a loan for $250,000. I promise I am not exaggerating this number to pay for her dream wedding to a guy she had known for three months. They got divorced less than a year later, and she is still in debt from it. Story 9. Talking about possessions, slipping dollar amounts into conversations, act like you've been there before. So you're saying I shouldn't brag about my favorite $7 boots that I bought at a thrift store? Knew a guy that once worked as a waiter at the restaurant at a high-end country club. He said it was pretty obvious who was new money and who was old money. New money people always made a point of getting the most expensive dinner on the menu and the fanciest wine and so on because they had imposter syndrome from hell and felt like they had had to act the part in order to prove that they deserved to be there. Old Money would order a cheeseburger and a Coke because that's what they were in the mood for. Damn, the McDonald's kid for sure thinks I'm old money. Again, it's all down to anxious fronting. People who think that other people have to know how much they make, even though they'll never be seen again. The really wealthy don't have to worry, that's for sure. And they don't care what anyone thinks, so they order what they want. Now I'm hungry for a cheeseburger and a Coke. Story 10. We don't get anything that screams pretending to be upper class in Australia at the moment, thanks to our mining sector. At the height of the boom, someone could leave high school, get some tickets, and pretty much walk into a six-figure job on the mines. So the young man driving around in an expensive muscle car while covered in tattoos, slabs of beer in the back, may not be pretending, but could be a cub. Cashed up bogan. Same in the U.S. with oil fields. I have several friends from here in Seattle that went to the Dakotas and got really high-paying jobs, then blew it all on expensive cars. Story 11. Knock off luxury brand anything. Usually watches, bags, wallets, clothes. There are plenty of respectable, elegant things that look and work just as well. You're not tricking us, and you're not tricking them, the people who swim in those lanes all the time. My mother is not into trying to appear high-end, so to parody that mentality, she bought a bunch of really massive diamond rings over the years that are 100% fake, and she knew they were. She would intentionally wear them around people's she knew who were vain and materialistic so they would ooh and ah over how my dad takes good care of her. She wouldn't tell them they were fake and would just be chuckling on the inside the whole time. Story 12. Definitely buying cars you can't afford. I'm solidly middle class and drive a Ford Focus. Don't buy one. They're junk. And a lot of people I work with that make less than I do roll in driving big expensive trucks or Mercedes cars. If I can't afford that, I know they can't. I'm a teacher. I'm a bit surprised by seeing what some of my colleagues driving at the various schools have. Far too many luxury cars for it to be the spouse paying for it. Yeah, that's true too. There are a lot of people that want to show off but they rely on their spouse to cover the cost. If that's the case, they better be worshipping their spouse. One bad argument can be the difference between having this luxury car and acting your wage. Story 13. Rich people on Instagram are probably mostly fake rich, buying followers. If I were a billionaire, I would not want to be tagged partying on a yacht, especially not in 2020. The only rich people that like to be tagged on their yachts are stupid kids and celebrities that make a living off being a public figure. Most mega-rich people that can afford a yacht don't want people to find them through social media. Story 14. My boyfriend tried to convince me that if I bought a KitchenAid that we'd need to leave it on the counter so people would notice that we could afford to spend $250 on a kitchen appliance. I would love to have one, but I don't bake enough to justify it. And if I ever get one, it's going to be stored when I'm not using it because I hate clutter on my counters. 
Story 15. Buying expensive clothes or fake ones and owning a high-end phone, but just stretch your budget to do this in order to make it seem like you can afford excess when you really can't. And then not getting those expensive clothes tailored. If you're gonna buy the fancy clothes, spend the extra money to make sure they actually fit, damn it. Personally, I'd just skip the buying new clothes and spend it on the tailor to make sure the clothes I have fit. I actually find that service a bit more valuable than buying new clothes. And it's not like like I treat my clothes poorly. The clothes I have are comfy. I definitely spend the extra money on a tailor to make sure they're as comfy as they can possibly be. Story 16. Shopping in the curtains aisle of Walmart and openly declaring to me an employee trying to zone out that we have no taste. I wish employees were allowed to sass back at stuff like that. I actually did throw it back to her by saying, Miss, this isn't TJ Maxx. Story 17. Talking about how expensive everything you have is and how much money you have. I've found that truly wealthy people don't feel compelled to talk about it constantly. A friend of mine said that a woman she had to deal with would spend $20 on something worth $10 and then tell her she spent $30 on it. Story 18. Wearing brand clothes that have the huge name of the brand on them. I used to work in one of the brand stores, and these were literally made for the lower class that wants to show off. More expensive and higher quality items never had this flexing on them. As a poor person, I've noticed that less is more when it comes to casual fashion. Yeah, I don't get that whole thing of wearing a cheap t-shirt with a valuable high-end luxury brand's logo on it. Story 19. Posting pictures of your fancy cars and house renovations, shoes, etc. on social media. Real rich people don't actually have to scream, I'm rich, to be rich. Most people do that for the attention and views, not because they're rich. Story 20. Appearance of wealth, but no philanthropy. Philanthropy is how true upper-class people really show off. A subset of this is patronage of the arts. The truly wealthy can afford to finance the culture they want to see. Story 21. Saw some guys at a stoplight in a convertible 6 Series BMW with a top-down blasting music and wearing expensive clothes. I can see his dashboard. Every possible warning light was on. To be fair, in a bimmer, those lights probably came on the day he bought it. Story 22. Conspicuous consumption. Ugly big houses, flashy things, diamonds, gold, handbags with labels, leopard print clothes, fur, branded goods, too much plastic surgery? I think I'll stop here as it's not making me feel like a nice person. Story 23. 20 dudes who pulled their money to pay for one bottle service table at a Vegas club. Source was one of those dudes. Honestly, if it's 20 dudes, that's more okay. Story 24. McMansions without curtains or furniture in the upstairs. Curtains are freaking expensive, bro. <laughs> My parents put shower curtains up in their house. Story 25. Constantly altering your pink Chanel suit to fit in at a country club. For once, maybe someone will call me sir without adding you're making a scene. Story 26. Putting entrepreneur on any social media platform bio. When I see this, I always think to myself, so you're unemployed, eh? Story 27. Throwing parties every week and calling everyone an old sport. All for that girl that lives right across from you. Story 28. Pronouncing your name Bouquet. The Bouquet Residence. The Lady of the House speaking. Story 29. Struggling to scrape together the minimum payments on a luxury car. Story 30. Moving to L.A. despite not being able to afford living there. Story 31. $5,000 purse with no money in it. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.